Hey everyone, welcome to Wolfpins Gaming Den. Today we'll be reviewing the game Bees. Uh, Bees is sort of a lightish uh, game where you have a worker movement where you have a bee that you're moving around on a modular board with the objective of collecting different nectars from different spots. And those nectars then go on to sort of uh, your play area where you're trying to build patterns with the objective of completing both personal and common goals over the course of the game. Uh, it is designed by Dan Halstead, uh, and I, if I'm not mistaken, this is probably his uh, first game because this is the only entry he has on VGG. Uh, but it's a solid first effort, as we will see uh, shortly in a few minutes. Uh, the version that I have here is published by Next Move. It is also published by Plan B in certain markets, uh, and you would know both these publishers from titles such as the Azul series, uh, Reef, and so on. So there is definitely quite a bit of pedigree in terms of putting out good uh, abstract or abstractish games. Uh, and uh, generally, I had high expectations going into this one uh, because the component quality, as you'll see in a minute, is top notch. So let's go to the table. Uh, let's start by seeing how the game works. I'll do a quick overview. I will also have a separate full tutorial uh, for the game, which will include the setup, and I will have the link for that down below. So if you're looking for a full end-to-end -end teach for the game, uh, use the link to sort of like check out that video there. Uh, but otherwise, this will give you a good overview of how the game uh, works and flows, and then we'll come back and talk about the things that I liked uh, and didn't like about the game. So let's go to the table and see how it works. Hey folks, welcome to the table. So here we have the game set up for a four play game. Uh, we'll be looking at the play area as well as all the different bees with the four player setup. But for ease of explanation, we'll just use one of the player boards uh, to make sure that we're fitting it appropriately in the uh, video as it stands right now. Before we run into what a turn structure looks like, let's quickly go through what you're looking to accomplish in the game. So the game will basically come with a bunch of these objective cards. Uh, there are going to be three objective cards that are going to be set out at the side. Uh, all of the players will be aiming to score points based on these three ones. So these are common for everybody. At the start of the game, you will also be given a set of these objective cards, uh, one of each uh, different color in your hand. And at the very start of the game, you will have to choose two of these to keep and then one will get discarded. So basically, everybody's scoring for five objective cards overall, two of which are unique to you and three of which are common to everybody. These objective cards will be based purely on the pattern that you create over your player board right here. So how do we do that? Let's run into sort of like how the turn structure works. So at the start of the game, your bees will all start off at the center uh, uh, tile right over here, facing outward. On your turn, you will basically go through three different steps. The first one is you will determine the flight plan. The flight plan basically means you will look at your, where your uh, bee is right now and you will determine which direction you want to move this into. Now, as we look at the bee, uh, let's uh, call out a few different pieces in here because it's important to understand this before we go any further. So if you look at the bases, there are certain numbers printed right there. Uh, the very front one has sort of like a crossed out a symbol. So what this basically means is uh, at the start of the game, the bee is faced out here you cannot move in the direction that is right in front of you. And that is shown by this crossed out symbol right here. If you're moving on any one of these other directions, you can move these many number of spaces. So if you're moving in this direction, you can move either one or five hexes. If you're moving in this direction, it's two or four. And if you're going towards the back, it's three. <coughs> Excuse me. And then of course, on the other side, it's also one and five, uh, one or five, and then two or four. So as an example, uh, I could say that I want to perhaps move in uh, this direction, uh, or let's say, for example, perhaps in this direction. And if I wanted to move in this direction, the base says I can move one or five spaces. So I will basically turn my bee in this direction and then move there. So the planning phase, as per the rule book, basically just simply means you're going to say the direction that you're going to move into. The next stage is doing the flight itself, which basically would be, uh, so you're going to turn your B around, you will move the number of spaces that you were supposed to. So in this case, we had said we're moving in this direction, it's one to five spaces, uh, we chose one, so we will turn it around like so, move in this direction, which is just one spot over. And after you've landed, if you have one of these nectar tiles available on that spot, you can pick one of these up and you can put it on your player board. So it is pretty much as simple as that. Uh, 
the rules around placement of these on your player board are pretty straightforward as well. It depends on the number of spaces you move. So in this case, we moved one spot. So you will basically look at your player board right here and you can see there are different uh, play areas numbered sequentially. So all of these are ones, uh, these are twos and threes, and these are fours and fives. These represent the number of spaces your bee flew uh, when picking up that particular nectar. So in this case, you moved one spot. So this can go on any one of these different spots right here. Uh, it is important to note that obviously uh, once a particular number is filled up, if you no longer are able to put it there, you would not be able to do that like so. Uh, and that pretty much would be it. Now, on the other hand, if you were to finish your turn on a spot where there's a large nectar tile, uh, you and the nectar tile is available, you would be able to pick up the nectar tile, you would put down your bee in the direction that it flew, and then if you have uh, the smaller nectar tile surrounding it, you can also pick up uh, one of those and do it. So if you land at the center and there is a larger one that's available and a smaller one on the side, it is possible to pick up two as part of the same turn. Placement rules, regardless of whether it's a large one or a small one, are the same. So if I had moved three spaces to be able to pick both of these up, I would need to put both of these down uh, on either the two dash three spots uh, right over here. Uh, once you put down these nectar tiles on the play area, uh, at that point, the size no longer matters. The size is only important for determining where these go on the board uh, and where you can pick it up from. Uh, and the game will continue like this, uh, going around uh, the table. Every time you collect and you put down a nectar tile on your play board, you will move your marker forward by one. Basically, what this means is uh, this is sort of like the track which determines when the end game objective is triggered. So you start off at zero. Uh, if you collect and place one nectar tile, you will move it forward by one. If you collect two nectar tiles on the same turn, you will move it forward by two at that point. So the game will continue in this way until somebody collects their 12th nectar tile, in which case everybody gets the same number of turns and the end game is then triggered. Uh, there is no one extra round at that point. Uh, the round in which somebody reaches the 12th nectar tile is uh, the last round that will be played. Once the last round is completed, obviously people will have a whole bunch of different nectars they would have put down on the board based on what they've collected. You will then score based on the objective tiles that you have, uh, objective cards that you have right out here. So certain cards will straight up give you points based on a certain color uh, that's available on your board. So it's pretty straightforward. For each yellow uh, nectar token that you have over there, you will score two points. Easy enough. Uh, certain other ones will give you points based on patterns that you can create, and some of them might give you uh, options between two different kind of scores based on which tier you're able to hit. Uh, hit the large, you know, the full objective of the card, you get the higher score. Uh, if you sort of like complete it partially, and they will define what that partial is, you will score the lower value right over here. And then, of course, you will have your personal objective cards, which you will score the same way as well. Uh, and with that, that pretty much is it in terms of the rules. A uh, couple of uh, finer details. Uh, obviously, when you're sort of like flying around, you cannot land on a spot where there is another bee. Uh, when you're sort of like taking a path, you can go over another bee, obviously. I did not talk about the leaf tile, so maybe I'll do that very quickly. If you land on the leaf tile, and you will see that these are the ones that do not have a nectar tile on them. Uh, if you go on a spot that has the water symbol, you get to basically take another flight right away. So it's uh, one way to maybe perhaps build up towards going into a spot where you're not able to reach on the same turn or maybe setting yourself up for a future move at that point. So objective is simple. Go to a spot, collect nectar tiles, put it on the board, create patterns, get points at the end of the game. And that's basically how bees works. So let's go back and let's talk about my thoughts on the game. Welcome back, folks. Uh, time to share my thoughts on what I think about the game overall. Uh, before I go into it, I'll quickly talk about the production quality and the art uh, quality in the game because uh, I think I, it does need to be called out. Uh, production quality is really top notch. I'm very happy with what's inside the box. Uh, these publishers have been known to put out games with strong production quality. If you've played Azul uh, Reef or any one of the corresponding titles, you will know that uh, they've they've done quite well in terms of the quality of the components that's put out, in terms of the aesthetics of the game, and this is definitely no exception uh, to that rule. Uh, the standout is probably uh, the different bees that come in the game. Uh, I was afraid at the start that, you know, the uh, wings might not be quite as sturdy, uh, but I, as of now, at least, uh, there's nothing for me to worry about because these have held on quite well. Uh, they do look quite nice as well on the board when, when it's out. It's, it really is a very nicely done small piece that you're moving around and doing different actions. 
Uh, the nectar tokens, of course, are pretty standard cylinders. Uh, the towels over here are pretty standard as well. Uh, the other standout for me is the player board that you're playing with. So these are recessed, but these are not just standard recessed boards because you're putting, so you're putting out these two different kind of nectar towels, the large ones and the small ones. Uh, there is that main recess that's happening on these different spots, but uh, there is an inner ring inside, uh, which is, I, I don't know if that's plastic or some other sort of uh, uh, material, but generally what that does is it gives you the impression uh, effectively working as a sort of like a three layered board uh, where uh, if you put down the smaller neck tiles, there's an inner small ring that holds that. But if you were to put down the larger neck tiles on the same spot, the um, top uh, circle, I don't know what's a, what's a good way of describing it, but that holds that in, play, uh, in space as well. So very neat uh, from a production standpoint. The artwork is okay. Again, I, I treat this more as an abstract-ish game. I know that there's a theme of bees going around collecting nectars. Uh, but there's a certain aspect of it that is, at least to me, it feels a little abstract. So I'm uh, I'm more than okay with the quality of the artwork that's available uh, inside the box as well. Uh, the card quality is fine. I've got these sleeved, uh, but I mean, they're, they're good enough as it is if you didn't want to do those uh, uh, as well. The other last item is uh, there is a insert, quite a good functional insert inside the box as well. Obviously, if you're keeping the box vertically, it might be a bit of a problem because these tokens, these line up on the inner uh, rows and they might sort of like move around a little bit. Uh, but if you're putting it flat out on your shelves or uh, wherever you want to put these games, they work perfectly fine. Uh, so overall, very happy with the production quality, very happy with the quality of the components inside the box. Uh, with that said, uh, now what do I think about the game itself? And this is where, uh, overall, I think it's a solid effort. Uh, as, as I might have mentioned earlier on, this is Dan Halstad's first game. So as a first effort, I would say that this is definitely quite a, uh, a solid piece of work uh, that's put out by him. Uh, it almost feels like you're playing two different games as part of one whole game. Uh, on one hand, you're moving your bee around and collecting the different nectars. And then on the other side, you're putting them down on your play board with the objective of complete, you know, uh, scoring points with these cards at the end of the game. And the reason why I say that they feel like two halves of it, it's almost like a tale of two games or, you know, some, some, something along those lines, because mechanically, they're definitely quite a bit different. Uh, and somehow the flow and your enjoyment of the game will be different for those two halves as well. It, it, at least for me, it was. And I'll quickly talk. Uh, let, let me just walk through what I mean by that. Uh, for me, the B movement on the board is probably the weakest part of the game. What I mean by that is whenever you're moving the B along on a particular line, so the rule book says, you know, you choose a direction, you choose, uh, you determine the number of spaces you're going to move, and then you head in that direction, and then you do the action of that location. Uh, but in my experience, what I've seen is uh, it often induces a little bit of AP uh, uh, with players where you're trying to figure out what is the most optimal move to get to a spot where you can get the large nectar and the small one. Uh, I mean, some players are quite fast, they will take their moves and so like uh, uh, the game flows, but in other uh, instances, there there has been a bit of slowdown with some of the turns, at least uh, in my experience. Uh, also, you quite often find yourself in a position where you choose a direction, you want to move it in that spot, and then you're like, you know what, I'm just gonna undo this very quickly. And again, let, let's, let's be honest, undos happen when you're playing games with friends. Uh, you might be like, well, I'm just gonna undo this very quickly because you know, it's, I, I realize that this may not be uh, the right move for me or I may not, it, it may not work the way that I thought it would. Uh, but then when you're backtracking because you've changed the direction of the B, you're like, well, was it facing this way when I made the move or is it, was it facing that way? And that problem compounds if you're sort of like bouncing off the leaves with the, uh, the water symbols on it because then you land on them and then you take another flight and you move on to somewhere else. And then perhaps after you've done that, you suddenly realize that that spot is, uh, that second move has not worked quite as well as you would have wanted. And then backtracking is even more of an effort at that point. Uh, I mean, you, you could house rule it and say, you know, uh, once you've done your flight, you can't really take it back and play it that way. But when you're playing with friends, that, that kind of stuff happens. And, you know, I, I accept that as part of the experience 
uh, it's more important for me and perhaps for you as well to enjoy the experience with the people you're playing with as opposed to making sure that the rules are followed down to the letter of the law. Uh, so if you do allow that little bit of flexibility, you will have moments where things will come down to a little bit of a, a standstill as you're trying to undo what you had just done and then try to find another something that works only to realize that maybe there is nothing else and you know, you, you're back to doing what you'd done earlier on. Uh, it, it could have been better. Uh, also, if there were maybe an additional piece where you marked it down when you were, you know, when you do your initial flight off of a particular spot, so that if you do have to undo, you know, you could just put it back and you would know exactly how that works. Similar to how you use some of the coins to mark different spots in golf, for example, when you're just about to putt, uh, you might just put down a coin, or if, if you don't know, sometimes uh, people will put down a coin on the spot where the, uh, the golf ball is, then you pick up the golf ball, you do whatever you want with it, uh, and then when you put it down, you know exactly where it goes because you put down a coin as a marker on that location. So something similar that just mark the spot that you're coming off of when you're doing that move, just in case somebody had to undo it might help. Uh, I think would have been would have been nice to have. Uh, but again, I'm, I'm nitpicking on that one sort of like component piece as it were, but generally uh, it, it, it does not feel as satisfying as the other half of the game, which is basically the ones where you're putting down nectar tiles on these different locations with the objective of you know getting points from those cards this for me was the more interesting aspect of the game because i was trying to solve like a bit of a spatial puzzle that is affected by the movement over here as well because the number of spaces you move uh determines the nectar that you can pick up and then obviously you want to pick up particular colors because they might be important for the objective you're trying to fulfill. And that for me was quite a bit of an interesting puzzle because you're trying to combine uh, the what you're looking from the objective card with the color, with the number of spaces moved, uh, and then the placement itself in terms of the spatial puzzle that you're solving out here. Uh, that I felt worked quite well. Uh, so take that for what it's worth. Uh, from my point of view, again, it does feel like the game is played in two halves. Uh, and for me, this being the weaker one and this definitely being the stronger uh, half from that point of view. The game does also flow quite fast. Uh, completing 12 Nectars doesn't take that long, especially if you're completing, if you're playing a two-player game, you will find that you get to the end of the game. Uh, if everybody's being reasonable on the turns quite fast, you're definitely gonna be under that 30 minute threshold at that point. Uh, you're really gonna be on the higher end if people start taking their time a little bit with uh, figuring out uh, the moves that they want to make and so on. Uh, the other item, uh, which again, uh, I think could have been better, but again, that's probably more uh, uh, up to the players to be diligent, is the movement up. Whenever you're collecting a nectar, you need to move this up on the top of your player board. Uh, in my experience, I found that the players would often miss doing that. And then we would just, but it's it's an easy fix because you can just count the number of nectars you have on your player board. Uh, and that's the number of spaces that you're at. So it's, it's not a major issue. Uh, but I just found that that's something that people missed out quite a bit. And I just wish that perhaps there was a better way of keeping track of that uh, at that point. Uh, but the game will go by quite fast. Uh, it is it, it is nice. The turns are, uh, again, as long as everybody's being reasonable with the movement here, it's it's quite easy. It's quite breezy. The, once you understand how the objective cards work, it's quite easy to pick up uh, and fulfill those. Uh, and overall, again, it's a... Uh, there have been a few games with the B team that have come out recently, um, but this is definitely, I would say for me, one of the stronger ones. Uh, so, you know, uh, take that for what it's well, what it's worth. Generally, I would definitely recommend it if you want to try If the theme appeals to you and what the rules overview that we did the walkthrough with, if that appeals to you, I would say that it's worth uh, checking out. Uh, in terms of scalability, uh, it, it, it scales fairly well between two to four uh, on the play account. Uh, I think I've enjoyed the game a little bit more on the two player side of things than the four player side of things, uh, simply by virtue of the amount of downtime that you would have as you're waiting for other people to do the turns. I don't think it adds particularly that much to your own personal experience uh, in terms of what you're getting out of the game. Uh, so for me, two player works quite as well but just with lesser time waiting for others. Uh, so if I had to you know, play this game again and again, I would probably do the two player one uh, a little bit more often, or at least I would try to, uh, than doing sort of like uh, the full four player count. Three player works quite uh, well as well. But again, it's not bad at any of those play accounts. Uh, it's just my personal preference would be two because of the downtime uh, aspect to it. Uh, and that's pretty much it. Uh, generally, again, uh, 
I, I like it. There's a lot to commend on it. And again, uh, the points that I made about the worker bee movement right over here, that probably is just sort of like my thing. And maybe the group that you're playing with is quite reasonable with the turns that they might take. And, you know, things are maybe faster and you're not doing uh, undoes or uh, quite as many undoes at that point, in which case it, it would definitely be a much more uh, smooth experience uh, on the gameplay front. So uh, that's pretty much it for me in terms of final rating, strong production quality, strong artwork, uh, gameplay solid uh, with a little bit of uh, mixed feelings from my end and skills well enough. Uh, from a thematic point of view, again, I know that at the start I said that I treat this as a bit of an abstract game, but again, if you look at the theme, uh, you, it, it definitely will come out uh, when you're doing your movement because at the end of the day, at a very basic level, uh, you have your bee, you're moving it around flower to flower, collecting nectars, that's what bees do. And then you're going back to your uh, beehive, I think it's, uh, and then you're uh, sort of like plopping it down. Uh, so it it, it 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 works quite well. It's a uh, it's a theme that uh, has been picking up uh, uh, in recent times uh, with uh, uh, more games looking to implement it. And I can I think there's definitely still a little bit of life left left in it uh, as of now. So my final rating for the game, I will give this a solid 7 out of 10. I think it is definitely a game worth checking out uh, if this kind of game appeals to you. If you have enjoyed games like Azul, Reef, uh, and other similar games of that ilk that have been put out by this publisher earlier on, it's obviously, I don't think it meets the standard that's set up set out by Azul. I think that's still sort of like uh, uh, definitely an evergreen title. Uh, but this one is quite good as well. Uh, definitely worth checking out. Uh, that's it for me. Thanks for watching. If you have any thoughts, comments, suggestions, uh, please feel free to leave them down below. I'll get to them as soon as I can. And in the meanwhile, uh, hopefully you guys are staying safe. Take care and I'll see you in the next one.